One great change I've noticed in punk music over the past five years, and you brought this out when you mentioned people like Wagner, uh, people in pop music five years ago wouldn't have that kind of background. Now, your background must be pretty extensive. You have quite a catholicity as far as uh, musical interests go, don't you? Uh, one of the reasons why this was is because I was an avid record collector. Like, you've got to collect interviews. I mean, <laughs> pop stars. I, I was a crazy record collector. And I never used to listen to them very much. I just used to collect them. And uh, used to go mad on covers, and particularly export you ones. You mean just I mean, everybody? Yeah. Beethoven Everything, yeah. Nina Simone. And, uh, well, I, you know, I I got so many records. I mean, th this is nothing. I mean, I threw lots and lots of stuff away, lots of real rubbish that I bought. and. I started off basically very impressed by an American friend record collection who ha who had a lot of the blues which very first sparked me off when I was at art school to blues and, and was a very early influence of the group people like Little Water, Booker T, uh, Jimmy Reed all these people who the same probably the same people that influenced the Stones in the early days Muddy Waters, Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley all their records were here in England, you know, and I mean, none of them were really released, and they were all with this guy. And it just knocked me out to see all these records, and I wanted them, you know, and eventually I ended up with them because he went to back to America, and he just knew that I wanted those records so badly, he just gave them to me. And he works with us at the moment in the States, he's our production manager. And uh, from that moment on, I never looked back. Every record I bought, I dug, and the ones which I already had, I listened to because I suddenly realised that music was for listening to, you know, not for looking at. Mm -hmm. And there I was with a library, you know. Oh, your interest was set to go. Do you, do you have yeah, I go from 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 I don't know Im impressionist composers like Debussy and Ravel. I like Wagner for opera and Mozart. I like Mozart symphonies. And I like Beethoven. I like. Uh, Shostakovich to a certain degree, Benjamin Britten, Purcell, and uh, I, Mahler. I like most of the things which which Leonard Bernstein conducts. I think he's a great conductor, and I think he always pulls off fantastic recordings. And some of the composers that I don't even like, he manages to get such good performances and such good good recordings that I'll listen to anything that he does and and then then through a jazz catalogue I I'd, I'd started off with Charlie Parker which is probably the best way to start then then dug John Coltrane and then started with singers I don't know I can really really now listen to anything I like bluegrass I like Indian music I like everything Irish folk music I even I even even like you know middle of the road stuff i mean i mean like m real middle of the road stuff like not the dirty edges i mean the genuine stuff frank sinatra mm -hmm. sammy davis you're kind of fortunate to yeah well you i, must have I a don't lot know of fun with it's peculiar stuff. yeah because it's so easy <coughs> it's so easy to do and i mean people only only you know ruin their lives by having kind of constricted tastes mm -hmm. You know, and the and the, the the day you just open your mind to music, you're halfway to opening your mind to life. Do you think that's one of the reasons that the rock has taken on so m much more dimension in the past two or three years because so many of the people involved have this wider interest, this wider? I think it's a mixture of of this. Uh, they've got wider influences, and also also it's a mixture of the fact that that middle of the road music, modern jazz and so many different streams like like there was trad, there was mainstream, there was there was modern jazz, the best modern jazz that anyone could ever want. You know, there was the best folk music, all in separate streams. Suddenly it all died and converged into pop. Mm -hmm. That's why pop is so strong. You know, it's 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 a you know, there's there's Milt Jackson is the is the head of a pop record label, and Peter, Peter Paul and Mary have just brought out a kind of a Bob Dylan single, you know, and uh, the whole thing is all combined, you know, and a lot uh, a lot of my friends from who play bluegrass music is Sandy and Jeannie Darlington and the uh, good friends. They 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 play pop songs now, you know. 
before I run out of space here, a couple of things I, I want to get on, going over old ground. The tour of the United States, maybe some, some recollections of what it was like being a, a British pop artist and, and being there specifically, Monterey, if we could touch on it. Yeah. Well, Monterey was, was a fantastic experience, and we unfortunately didn't see the whole days, the whole three days, because we were at the Fillmore. And uh, those two shows were such a kick in the ass. They really were for us. To go and play at the Fillmore, you play to the best possible audience, the best possible audience, the, the nicest people, the most considerate audience, the best possible microphone system, the best possible acoustics, everything has been looked after. You know, every, everyone goes out of their way and it's always packed, you know, for whatever artist, you know, it's as though they make sure that there's an audience there for everyone. I don't know, it's, it's a great place. Then we went from there to Monterey, and uh, of course we just couldn't believe it. I mean, we expected it to be big, but God, that, that whole situation, you know, and all the police with smiling faces and, you know, with flowers around their neck, and I mean, the whole, the whole thing was really 100% peace and 100% you know fantastic I mean it wasn't it wasn't just pop music to me I mean my contribution to that wasn't so much the fact that I went on and played my contribution was what I learnt you know I mean how much nearer I got to kind of life you know and, and I, I couldn't condemn anything you know, on, on this earth after seeing a thing like that, you know. That's a beautiful week. Yeah. I wonder if it could ever happen again. Just well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. Uh, a lot of people have asked where, where all the money went from it, and I, 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 I know Andrew Oldham pretty well, and he was one of the directors, and, and he's hoping that, that a lot of it's going to be used to go back and do another one. And let's hope that some of the people that didn't appear at the last one will appear at the next one. Because, you know, a lot of groovy people didn't show up, you know. And I mean, unfortunately now, Otis Redding's dead, you know. Mm. He I can't appear again, but I mean, I think he put on probably the best show of his life at Monterey. Mm -hmm. I've read a lot of, of, a lot of reviews on the things you've done in, in, in various American musical magazines, etc. They're all generally favorable. The only unfavorable comment I've ever had is about the smashing of the amplifier situation. Uh, we always get this. <laughs> we always get people... And in fact, it does us probably the most good <laughs> of ev anything we do. It does us the most good. It gives us the biggest kicks on the stage. It, you know, it, it really is. I smell the who, you know, the smoke bombs mm -hmm. and the smashing. It's, 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 it's more the who than, than any, any, any of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. really is. But it evolved as an accident, didn't it? Originally, it evolved, originally I, I, I banged a guitar on a ceiling. I was kicking it around, banging it against things to get noises. And it broke, and so that I wouldn't look an idiot, I picked up a spare, which was identical. And uh, I was playing a guitar at that time, which was uh, virtually unrepairable each time it broke, you know. I never, I had 14 Rickenbackers. That was when, when I was on about, you know, 20 pounds a week. And I'm still paying for them today because I got them on any conceivable means, you know. Theft, HP, long-term credit with like 50 different shops. I really didn't care. I just wanted to get them and smash them, you know. And, and, and it was, it's the only vice that I've allowed myself. And I've really got so much out of it. Really got so much out of it. Like, it's so fantastic just to, to do something so exhibitionist so focusing so traumatic melodramatic in front of so many people you know it's 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 got it's got all all all, all the kind of the 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 perversion of ripping off all your clothes it's got all the all the all the the wonder of kind of complete f inhibition uh, lack of inhibitions you know the 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 abandon of it is the main thing. Mm. Just completely freaking out, you know. Sometimes angrily, sometimes happily. But you, there's nothing between you and the music. You know, there's nothing. And at the end of the show, there's still nothing between you and the music. You know, there's nothing to stop you getting the ultimate sound out of the guitar because you're not cared about, ca caring about the finish of it. You're not cared about, you're not in love with the thing. You know, I, I, I'm not a guitar lover, I'm a guitar player. You know, and I mean, 
in the same light, I mean, if I saw Ravi Shankar get up and break his instrument after he played, I'd probably be sick. But then, but then, if people did it for me, I mean, I think, I think they're 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 wasting their vomit because, you know, I've got some guitars upstairs that I love that I wouldn't smash, you know, and ironically, some of them get broken by accident, but. You know, it's they're just things. They're like amplifiers. They're just things that I come on and I strum, you know, and mm. then throw them around. They're just pieces. They're like uniform, piece of trade. And you know, if if you get do a bad show, you smash up your guitar and it becomes a good show. If you do a good show, you smash up your guitar and it becomes even a better show. It, it's a finale. It's the ultimate finale. You get to the point where you literally just can't play another note because there's nothing to play it on. You know, the show's over, folks. You know, there's nothing like it. What about the new album? Now this program doesn't come out until September 1st, so probably by that time the new album will be out. So, uh, are you how far along? I hear there's some freaky things in it. Uh, well, we're very, very much involved in it at the moment. There, there are several ideas for format. One of them is the one which we abandoned earlier, of an operatic idea, which would which would mean in in in, in 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 sim in simple terms, it wouldn't be like the mini opera. In other words, uh, just a few pop songs thrown together telling a story. Mm -hmm. It would be an opera, but using pop ter music musical terms. Uh, there'd be librettos. There'd be certain spoken parts. There'd be instrumental passages, and there'd be choirs, and there'd be this kind of thing. But I mean, it'd all be the Who bashing away. And I've half written one, which I think might be suitable. And if I get a minute, which isn't very likely, I'll write the rest of it. Uh, there's that. On the other hand, there's there's basically just letting the thing roll out as a normal album. Because funnily enough, we've become very productive as songwriters in the group. And we've probably got some of our best songs ready to go on. And I mean... In fact, some of them are so good, I mean, there's, we're not going to need any kind of sales gimmicks. And, uh, That's great. Let's, let's hope so. But, I mean, I, you know, I think the operatic thing is the one to go for. And uh, we can incorporate, you know, most of the good melodies that we've got anyway I into it, so it's no problem. Are you bringing any more instrumentation in now for this album? Uh, we've never used... Orchestra. Um, I mean, I, I've learnt to orchestrate. I started last year, and I've tried a few out, and they sound all right. And uh, I've been working pretty hard in our free breaks to, to you know, practice orchestration. And my father helps me, and his friends help me. And uh, I could orchestrate, but funnily enough, I don't think it'll ever happen. It's never happened before. You know, I'd I like to capture the 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 feeling of the orchestra in other ways you know just perhaps perhaps by you know abandoned guitar playing or something mm. but then more and more people are, 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 are leaning on on the orchestra and I I'd like if I ever used it I'd like to to write the song write the lyric orchestrate it and conduct the thing you know mm -hmm. and at least in that way I'd have uh, as much control over the thing as possible